welcome to a third Sunday in Epiphany with First St. Andrew's United Church in London, Ontario. We gather from places near and far to be together. We are concerned about each and every one of you. Let us worship God. We acknowledge that we are situated on the traditional territories of Native people. We value and appreciate the significant historical, contemporary contributions of local and regional uh, First Nations, the indigenous urban populations, as well as the original people of Turtle Island. Turtle Island, of course, is North America. This morning, as we light this little flame, we hope that it will light the world, and eventually this flame will. The light of Christ.
In a world that is sometimes a scary and confusing place, we come here to find sanctuary. In a world that is sometimes ahead of itself, we come here to encounter what is holy. In a society which abuses power so readily, we come here to weave ourselves into a circle of God's love. Let us bow our heads in a moment of prayer. There are days, O oh God, when we feel like tumbleweed bouncing across the prairies. There are days, O oh God, when we feel as if life is out of control, as if we are held hostage in a whim of the world's leaders. But through it all sounds your voice. You know that I am with you. May this time of worship strengthen us to see the possibilities rather than the limits, the abundance rather than the scarcity, the voice we have to live our blessing in the world. Amen. This morning we read from the Gospel of Mark, Call of the Disciples. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is coming near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed through the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, I will make you fishers for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As they went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boats, mending their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The reading of the word of God. Let us bow our heads in a moment of prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. 
Amen. I hope you're not disappointed this morning because all I have for you are questions, 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 questions. In a national public radio interview this week with Paul Greengrass, the director of News of the World, have, have you seen, well, you probably, you may not have seen that, that new movie, but we've read the book. Oh my goodness, it is a wonderful book. I, I, won't, I won't steal any of it for you. Paul, Paul said in that interview, he said that another interview had asked him a question. Is this the beginning of something new or the end of something old? Let me do that again. Is this the beginning of something new or, or the end of something old? What a wonderful question that is for today. Could we ask that question about so many things and, and I'm about to. As it's impossible to answer because often the beginning of one thing is the end of something else. We are at crossroads in so many ways here in the beginning of 2021. Which will dominate over time? The first situation that I propose to you is easy. Because we're going to look at the gospel reading that we did this morning, that gospel from Mark, Jesus' calling of Simon and Andrew from their nets to come and be fishers for people. It's a miraculous event because they responded immediately. I don't know how long any of you have been in the church. I've been there for a long time, and, and I suspect you have too. Nothing happens in the church immediately. <laughs> we, we often talk about church time. Some people new in the church say, well, but I thought we could do that. Just we, if I just mentioned it, we could do it. And, and, and I often have to, com uh, to, to calm them down and, and say, no, no, that will happen in church time. <laughs> in fact, in this very business building, I, I had to remind a person that that was a, a year five activity, not a year one activity. Is this the beginning of something new or the end of something old? At the time, no one knew which was more important. A generation later, Mark, as he is creating his gospel, as he realizes that the church is being born, he makes it a headline in his gospel. One of the things that happens in chapter 1 of, of Mark, the church is coming into being. 2,000 years later, Jesus' call to Simon and Andrew was the beginning of something enormous, something that transformed the world, something that brings us together here this morning. Isn't, isn't that amazing that that little event back there was the beginning of, of all of that as the disciples answered the call, fishing for people, which was or fishing for fish, excuse me, fishing for fish had been the men's livelihood, and it becomes then just a footnote of history. Here's where the question about beginnings and endings gets hard. Let's ask a question about some current events, and, and when you're dealing with current events in this question, it is much more difficult. Did something die or did something begin? Or, or is it just kind of same old, same old? First up, the worldwide pandemic. Oh, we have been captured by that event. You can't, if you, if, you, if you turned on the television, you don't even have to turn on the news. If you turned on the television, it's there in your face all the time, numbers and, and, and all kinds of things. Let me start with something easy about that pandemic. 
this time next year, people will be wearing face masks. At the start of the flu season, I'm absolutely sure of it, face masks are, are here to stay. In Canada, the question about religious groups masking up has come to an end. We don't ask that question about whether it's okay for Muslims to, to, to wear masks. Public health underfunding will come to an end, at least until we forget. If I'm allowed to wish for a new beginning, we start to see the world as a global village where the health and well-being of everyone is important. I know that's an old thing that, that Jesus started a long time ago. That was the central part of, of his message to us. But, but it is really going to be important to us to remember this as we go forward. People living, uh, uh, earning a living wage, or people help being taken care of in every part of the world in pandemic times is important. Let's move on to something else, something that's happening this week. The inauguration of Joe Biden as President of the United States. What begins, what ends, what stays the same? I kind of put that question about what stays the same as a, in as a red herring because nothing ever stays the same. Everything is always moving. Things are always drifting to the left or to the right. They're drifting up or they're drifting down. They're drifting in all kinds of directions, even without our noticing. So nothing really stays the same. Even when we think we are standing still, we're not. The inauguration this week signals the end of the American Civil War. <laughs> In a series of events, starting with the election of Barack Obama and Joe Biden, the Civil War was the issue. It was the central issue in that election. Then the backlash to that election put Donald Trump into, into, into office as a direct reaction to a Barack Obama. This week, as Joe Biden is named president, the Civil War was fought all over again, and freedom from slavery won. This week, we start a long process of reestablishing truth. It is one of those things that we need to continually work at, the establishment of truth, and, and we're never done with that, but we now know that that how important it is. Thirdly, the pandemic and the Christian church. Whew, this is a painful topic for all of us. Painful as we experience the end of the old church. Now, don't, don't worry. I, I, it may not die the way, the way that you think that it's going to, but but the old church is gone. We, we are in a new place. We, we cannot stay still. We continually must move on. We see emerging a new church. At the same time that that old church dies, we see a new church coming into being. More communication technology. I have done more communication technology in the, in the last two months than I ever thought was possible. But, but, but I can do it. I can Zoom. I can do all kinds of, of things. Rest, less reliance on a building. If we were to build this beautiful sanctuary all over again, we would do it differently. We, we would make sure that communication technology was built in and, and, and it would be easily handled. In the new church, the larger parish boundaries are more obvious. Maybe no boundaries at all. This, this word through new technology could go wherever it needs to go and, and we need to change our thinking in this new church to adjust to that new reality. 
We have to have more trust in working groups as, as we limit the number of meetings and the way we hold those meetings. We have to trust those people who have been put in charge of, of property or what else that they are doing something well and, and we need to, to, to help them to do their jobs by themselves. If we are at a crossroads, we need your help. And we are at a crossroads. To decide what path to take. That's, that's what crossroads are all about. That's, that's what happens when you come to a crossroads. You come to a divergence of roads and you have to say to yourself, shall I go this way or shall I go that way? What is the new mission for this new church and world? I told you I had lots of questions this morning. What is the new mission? I, I know it's kind of like the old mission, but, but what are the nuances of, of that new mission that we, are, uh, that we should be striving for? Where should we put our resources? We have resources within the church, within our community. Where can we put those resources to the most benefit? And it's not the same place that we put the resources in the past. What is Christ calling the new disciples to proclaim? For surely as you hear Mark this morning, Jesus is calling you. He's calling each and every one of you He's calling you to a new discipleship that will look different than the old discipleship. The church is always on the move. Where should we go to proclaim our message? Should we stay in the sanctuaries and, and, and in the buildings or should we be out in the world on the highways and byways and how should we do those things in a way that, that will fill this new mission. We are at a crossroads, and the crossroads gives us great opportunity. It gives us the possibility of moving in new directions in ways that we couldn't do a, a year ago or, or two years ago. As we stand at the crossroads of, of, of the new church, help us to make the right decisions to go forward in your name. Let us bow our heads in a moment of prayer. Gracious God, as we contemplate these crossroads, as we struggle with new beginnings and, and, and the death of, of old things, help us to choose you. Help us to follow immediately as you have called us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come together and worship, let us bow our heads in a time of prayer. Gracious God, these are scary times. These are, lo these are lonely times. These are, these are changing times. These are interesting times. 
These are hopeful times. These are, are times of our lives. These are times that will be remembered. These are times that we will tell our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren about. Yes, we were there. We were there in 2020 and 2021. But as we face these challenges, we are not sure that we're up to the challenge. Strengthen us. Strengthen us as your people, even though that we are distant from one another. Help us to find strength in one another. Help us to find new ways of coming together, new ways of reaching out to each other, new ways of reaching out to the world. Gracious God, with your help, we, we are up to these things. Come in and strengthen us in specific ways that we will need in the future. Come into our lives and, and support us in ways that we personally need through prayer and, and through communion with you and with one another. Help us to find the mental health that we need, for we have been put off balance. Help us to find the, the, the support that we need to, to, to go forward and not simply try to stay where we are. Gracious God, we pray these things in the, in the strong name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As Simon and Andrew responded to Jesus' call, we too respond with our gifts. Stewardship is everything we do after we say, I believe. We give ourselves to God. Let us receive our offering. others symbols of hope for one human family and signs of your love for all your children. In love's name we offer these gifts. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Be safe.